Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another tutorial on addicted fishing. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and give this video a like. I'm Cameron Black from Gone Catch and Guide Service and we're going to be discussing my top three kokanee lures for fishing. So first and foremost guys, you know, there's a lot of great kokanee lures out on the market and there's a, almost any kokanee lure that has its time and place when it's gonna catch some fish. But first things first is I tie a lot of my own kokanee lures up with my own hooks, but every lure that I tie, I use with a 12 pound P-Line SS fluorocarbon. It's really abrasion resistant, so when you're removing the hooks from the fish, you're not gonna nick it and break a lure off on the next fish. And it's also got you know the clear properties that we're looking for when we're fishing for kokanee in these clear lakes. All right guys, so before I really get into the hooks of this, I want you guys to make sure to give me a comment down below and let me know what your favorite kokanee lure is. Like if you had to go to the lake and only fish with one kokanee lure, and that's the only thing you can fish the rest of your life, what would it be? Give me a comment down below. The second thing that I like to do with the lures that I tie up is my hook spacing. Hook spacing is incredibly important when it comes to landing kokanee, because as we all know, they're very soft mouth, and I do like to get one hook in the mouth and maybe one hook somewhere else that's gonna get a little more bite. So I always tie my hooks with about a one finger space in between them. And this allows a little range of motion that, the that the, uh, hopefully the fish can grab one hook and get tangled up in the other. So almost all my leaders, despite how big or small my lures are, I'm gonna have that hook spacing right there. Now one thing when it comes to my top three kokanee lures is that I don't really get too crazy about color. So with these three lures that I have here today, it's gonna to be more about the size and the presentation of the lure versus, like I said, color. Presentation over color in my book, always. And what I mean by that is there's different sizes to these lures. There's times of years when the water's real cold, where the fish are a little more timid and they're not as aggressive to the baits. I like to use just something real tiny, just enough to kind of get their attention and have them come in for a closer look so they can hopefully grab the corn. And then there are also times of years when the water temperatures are warm and the fish seem more aggressive, where having a little bit bigger lure that's a real aggressive action seems to trigger more strikes. So presentation over color always. Another common feature that my top three kokanee lures have is that they have the ability to shake the corn. And what I mean by that is like besides using a dodger that's going to impart some action on the lure and it's going to kind of trickle down to the corn, that the, the blades or the baits that I'm using that when they're spinning and they're making that water move around that lure, that the corn kernels that are on those hooks are also shaking and moving too. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I've got something that's like spinning in front of the water coming through and it allows a little bit of shake. Like I said, it gets kind of nerdy in here, but when you're talking about kokanee, I think having that shake is super important. And these top three lures of mine all do that. All right, one of my top lure guys is a basic spinning glow. And as you can see here, this is a very small size and I've got one little bead there in front of my hooks that are spaced that distance that I talked about earlier apart. Now this presentation seems to work really well when the water is really cold and the fish are being kind of timid. Um, this also seems to work a little bit better too when the fish are up on the surface or closer to the top and they tend to be more spooky. Seems like when their fish are being a little more spooky, they don't want to go to big aggressive presentations. However, even within this dodger moving this lure around, I get a lot of action because I'm using a real short leader here, probably about eight to nine inches. But with that blade spinning around, those, around that line, it's actually breaking that water up and causing a little bit of shake on those kernels of corn. I'm gonna show you here in just a sec. All right guys, so you can see that Brad's kokanee dodger is really whipping that spinning glow around but that spinning glow is breaking up the water and it's providing a lot of shake on those kernels of corn. And I think that entices just a few more strikes, especially when the fish are being timid. So another lure in my top three is gonna be my little hoochie with a little smile blade in front of it. So how this lure is created is it has a stack bead that's put on the line first, so it's sitting up against the hooks. And now what it's gonna do is you take your favorite hoochie, slide it over the top of that stack bead, and what that stack bead will do is keep the uh, hoochie's legs kind of spread it out, and when the water's getting moved around, it's gonna add a lot of action to that, followed by a small bead, and then a little smile blade that's gonna sit on top of that and spin. That's also gonna break the water up and provide a lot of action in the legs and in the lure, or in the legs and on the corn on this lure. Now this lure is a really good springtime lure for me. It seems like when things are heating up, the fish are starting to get out a little bit of depth up here. I mean, I understand that all kokanee lakes are different, but some of the lakes around here that we fish, the fish will actually be on the surface. 
And as they start to push down in that 10, 20 feet of water, this lure seems to do really well. And of course you can always change your colors and your patterns to this. You can use metallic, um, uh, use metallic little smile blades on top of it to find out your preference. But within that, I'm still using that 12 pound leader and I'm still keeping my hook spacing. I don't have to have the corn hidden underneath the legs of this hoochie right here to entice strikes. I can just literally have that corn just hanging just out just like that. Okay, so you can see that Brad's Kokanee Dodger really whipping that lure around. But even that little blade in front's kind of breaking up the action and allowing that shake to go on the corn and down that legs of the little hoochie. So it's a little different presentation, but I tell you what, some days this is all they want. Now last but not least, my favorite top three lure would be a Brad's Kokanee Cup Plug. This action on this lure imparts a ton of action on the corn when it's spinning around and honestly, like you can fish a Brad's Kokanee Cup Plug sometimes even without a dodger, just on your down rig or your leaded line, because the lure has so much action that it's putting on the corn that the fish, if they're being aggressive, they're coming after it and they're grabbing it every time. What this lure does is it spins around here and as it's spinning around, it's adding a lot of movement to the line, but also breaking up that water to add a lot of shake to the corn. So with the Brad's KCP, my preferred way to rig these is to have the little egg stop bobber stops and a small bead up in front of the lure. This little egg stop provides tension on the line so I can set the lure exactly how far away from the hooks I want. And what I like is I like the lure to just be right, the tail of the lure to be right at the top hook. And like I said, that just slides up and down so I can adjust exactly how far or how close I would want them. And so real quick guys, to add those to the line, I've got the little rubber egg stops here that are set up on the wires with the bead. And all I'm gonna do is take my leader line, put it through one of the loops, grab the bead and the egg stop and just slide it right on to wherever I want it to go. All right, so I got the Brad's Kokanee Dodger and the Brad's KCP behind it. As you can see, that Brad's KCP is a large presentation. It's got a lot of movement really shaking and whipping that corn around real erratic. Sometimes the fish really go for it. All right guys, so there's my top three lures. A couple things I wanna add though, just real quick, is your leader lengths. Now your leader lengths on the smaller presentations like the little spinning glow and the little hoochie with the smile blade, I like to run real short, but some days I do wanna vary that distance that I have between the dodger and the lure, just depending on how the fish are acting. If it's real aggressive, I can use a short leader and the fish will be attacking it. Sometimes I need to back that off a little bit. So I'm gonna change my leader lengths. I'm gonna play with it just to find that right movement that the fish seem to be keying on for that day or for that time of year. With the Brad's Kokanee Cut Plug, since it's got so much erratic action on it and it's adding so much movement to that corn, a longer leader can work really well, 18 to 24 inches even. Now for the Brad's Kokanee Cup Plug, the leader length isn't as important as those smaller lures. It's got so much erratic action adding to that corn that the lure can almost just catch kokanee well just by itself. So sometimes even using a 12 or an 18 or 24 inch leader will suffice. But once again, I will play with those lengths just to see how the fish are reacting to it. Sometimes a real short leader will do a lot better than a real long one and vice versa. And last but not least, when I'm out there on the lake, I'm gonna run through the size of those presentations a lot quicker before I start changing the color of the hoochie. So what I mean is that if I come out here and I started with a couple of those hoochies and smile blades, and I've got fish on my, fish on my electronics, I'm running my downrigger gear right through them, I know I'm on fish, the presenting to them, they're not going, I'm gonna change my speed, maybe change my leader length, but before I start really switching those colors, what I'll end up doing is I'll end up adding a different size presentation before I go and start breaking down all my lures and figuring out exactly what color they're gonna want. Sometimes they want a more aggressive action that that little hoochie and smile blade or that spin and glow can't provide, and that's where Brad's KCP comes in. Sometimes I come out with the Brad KCPs, they don't want them, I'll switch it down and size that presentation down, and then I'll end up getting more strikes. So if you guys found this useful, be sure to give this video a like. Also, like I said before, let us know what your top kokity lure is. If you only could fish one lure, the rest of your lives, what would it be? Mine would be the Brad's KCP in the copper color. Either way, thanks for tuning in, guys. If you guys are looking for a kokity trip, look up God Catching Guide Service. Subscribe, see ya.